Did you know that Kratos has already been to Egypt? He even potentially interacted with one of the gods there, and served as a vital component to the comic series God of War Fallen God that gave admittedly brief context to the events tying the aftermath of God of War 3 in Greece to God of War 2018 in Norse mythology. With numerous clues pointing to ancient Egypt littered throughout Kratos' time in the Norse setting, along with Tyr's travels to numerous other mythologies, including ancient Egypt, it is no wonder why fans alike are half expecting the series to take the ghost of Sparta and or Atreus to the arid desert lands. This is the second video in my new series detailing God of War's potential residency in ancient Egypt, with the previous one, of which you can view here in this card on your screen, detailing a brief overview of the gods and deities and the relationships they have with one another in ancient Egyptian mythology. It is fascinating history, and one ripe with so much character that would be an excellent fit for Santa Monica Studio to tackle next. This video is all about how we can find Kratos and his allies from Norse myth here in ancient Egypt. To get a better idea of the God of War series' ties with ancient Egypt, let's first take a brief look at the comic God of War Fallen God and see if this story sheds insight into what we can see from the Ghost of Sparta should we return to this sun-soaked land. Kratos has already been to Egypt thanks to the comic God of War Fallen God. So, what's the point for the series to return to this setting? For one, the comic had very little to do with Kratos' exploration of this ancient civilization, and rather focused on the pain Kratos was having about his horrible past, wishing to bury the painful memories along with his Blades of Chaos in order to properly move on. Kratos was in a lot of pain, and simply wanted to remove himself from his past, a normal reaction to have when someone goes through traumatic experiences that completely change one's life. However, it was due to repeated interactions with a certain character who comprised many forms who told the Ghost of Sparta that he shouldn't try to change his destiny, because things were bound to unfold in their prophesied way. Kratos would try to cast aside his Blades of Chaos, yet only found them returning to their master. No matter how hard Kratos tried to run from his past, the past always seemed to catch up to him one way or another. This particular villager would find Kratos as he trekked through the arid lands in many different forms, including a baboon, an ibex, and simply as a normal-looking villager. Interestingly enough, the god Thoth, the god of wisdom, writing, and integrity is represented in animal form as a baboon and ibex. The probability that Thoth met Kratos and knew who he was is certainly a likely theory, seeing as Thoth has incredible wisdom. Steering Kratos away from the lands of Egypt by telling the ghost of Sparta that his next path were to begin elsewhere, could Thoth perhaps be redirecting the unstable Kratos away from Egypt to protect his own lands? Just a thought. It's also worth mentioning that Thoth seems to have an idea or two about destiny, as the comic sees him lecture Kratos numerous times about his past and where his future needs to go, knowing that Kratos will indeed grow and find at least some peace before him in the Norse realms. Predicting he would be the hero of Ragnarok and care for a family of his own, essentially starting over in the Norse realms, Thoth pushed him in that direction, already knowing what his future had in store for him. Now, this is all taking into account that it was indeed Thoth who Kratos was interacting with throughout the comic, however, as there were no concrete indications that Kratos ran into any gods while passing through Egypt and can only be inferred upon. That being said, I think that these occurrences were indeed Thoth that Kratos kept interacting with and one that could shed light into a future return to Egypt in a God of War game. A possible scenario to get Kratos out of the Norse realms is that these horrors and nightmares of Kratos' horrible deeds keep coming back to haunt him, muddling his thoughts. Tyr could potentially suggest that Kratos travel with him to Egypt to seek out Thoth to help guide Kratos on the right path in dealing with his inner demons. Separated from Atreus, his one true rock in his life, Kratos could experience that mental stress added upon him, about wondering how his son is doing, traveling to different regions of the world in search of the remaining giants. 
As much as rebuilding the Norse realms is a priority and an ongoing effort for Kratos, it is something to be said that Kratos needs some time to recollect his thoughts with his allies, curious to see what lies beyond the Norse world. Upon finding Thoth with Tyr and potentially Freya and Mimir if they were to tag along, we would find Kratos attempting to find more purpose in his life away from his son and away from the rebuilding of the Norse realms. This is where conflict amounts. Ancient Egyptian mythology is rife with battles and gods vying for power. As discussed in the previous video, of which you can view in the description, a particularly fierce conflict grew when Horus, the child of the then deceased god Osiris, seeks vengeance on Seth, the one who murdered his father, through many gruesome and grueling fights to reclaim the throne as almighty ruler of the lands that resided to Seth. Kratos has had a troubled history with his own father, Zeus, yet it seems like this would be turned on its head, as instead of enacting revenge on a father, it would be about enacting revenge on the man who killed his father, which would, in this case, be Horus, trying to kill Seth, who killed Osiris, the father of Horus. Although Osiris is alive and only capable of living in the underworld due to his lack of power to return to the land of the living, this is another story of revenge for Horus, and one that would be fascinating to see Kratos get involved with. A master of finding himself in plots fraught with revenge and deaths of fathers, this would be a particularly insightful one to see Kratos find himself in. Ancient Egypt just has so much going on that would greatly shed more light on many fascinating aspects of how mythology works within the God of War universe. One such aspect is the higher plane of existence, of which gods like Osiris and Anubis may have much insight into. Seeing as much of the Greek pantheon has perished by Kratos' hands, and some of those from the Norse realms, what does the afterlife look like for those gods and deities? Could this be explored more in ancient Egypt, where the afterlife is very much a key component to Egyptian mythology? What do all you good people think? Comment below! Ra is another fascinating god that is incredibly important to Egyptian mythology, serving double duty as the sun god and also as one of the most important gods during the creation of Egyptian myth. Spending time with Ra aboard his flying vessel as he circles the land, ushering in night and day would be particularly insightful for Kratos, as Ra must venture through the underworld before emerging from the horizon to begin the next day. During this time, Ra pays his respects to Osiris, the god of the underworld, after being slain by Seth. This presents Kratos' insight into the inner workings of how the Egyptian world operates, with Anubis and Osiris working together to decide who gets to be granted an afterlife. Not only that, but another sinister deity also lurks in the depths of the underworld that could provide the bombastic, over-the-top action that made the series so popular in the first place. Deep in the underworld rests Apep, or Apophis, the massive serpent that tries to prevent Ra from returning to the skies to usher in each new day. You heard me right. Apophis engages Ra in combat each and every night that Ra passes through the underworld to try to prevent the sun from rising each morning. Fighting with Ra while aboard his flying vessel, Kratos could team up and fight Apophis in an incredible battle that could be among the highlights of a game set in ancient Egyptian mythology for the spectacle alone. We've seen just how incredible Santa Monica Studio is at creating massive, hulking serpents before with Jormungandr. And although we didn't battle the World Serpent, battling something like this set to the backdrop in the deep underworld of ancient Egyptian mythology would be some of the most incredible moments in the entire God of War franchise. Now, we all know that all signs are pointing at a game starring Atreus at some point, as he goes on his own journey to track down the remaining giants. Could that lead him here to ancient Egypt? Absolutely. Could we see Atreus get caught up in Horus' battles with Seth and journeying with Ra across the sky and into the underworld? Absolutely, as there is literally no way to tell with certainty where the franchise will bring us next and with which characters in the God of War franchise. Just know it isn't God of War without Kratos, and although a game with Atreus will certainly be awesome, there is a good chance the Ghost of Sparta will return at some point in time ready and raring for more adventures, even if it happens to be about rescuing Atreus from all the mischief he's created in other lands. 
The point is, there are near endless ways that developers will continue the franchise, and with a franchise as hugely successful as this one, I bet we'll be seeing the return of the Ghosts of Sparta and crew before the next decade. So, what would you hope to expect should the franchise head to Ancient Egypt? Do you agree with what I think the direction might be for this potential game? Let me know in the comments! I will be tackling Japanese mythology next in this series, so make sure to subscribe with your bell notifications turned on so you can view the next video. It's gonna be a good one, so don't miss it. Thank you all for all the awesome support, and I'll see you all real soon in the next video. Peace!